Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Amina and I'd absolutely love if you could subscribe to this channel and stay notified for more videos. I'm going to be detailing and going through how to search for research papers. Without including a good extensive bibliography or reference list, you cannot achieve anything higher than sort of 60%, 50% even I would say. Um, so a lot of the time a lot of students come to me and they email me saying I am at a roadblock, I'm only getting two twos, I'm only getting two ones, how can I improve, how can I get my myself up there in the first um, and really a lot of the times always is kind of the same thing it's the fact that they haven't necessarily read past the recommended reading list that the lecturer has given you or your mentor has given you not reading past that is going to mean that you it looks like you haven't done any extra reading now it can be quite daunting especially in your first or second year trying to find papers that you think are relevant that you think are telling the right story in today's video i'm going to be going through exactly how you can search for papers that could be relevant now not every paper you come across is going to give you something to write about that's just how it is a lot of the time you find 10 papers two of them are really good the rest of them you may not have that much you want to say about them and you discard them so there is a lot of kind of searching and refining but there is a method to be able to do that from the offset I'm going to be leaving the timestamps down below for each of the different steps that you need to take but it is in chronological order I would recommend going through from the first all the way down to the last step as opposed to jumping but if you do want to see See, um, a particular step then feel free to go and watch that. For the purpose of this video I'm going to be looking at insulin and obesity so the effect of obesity on insulin just because they're very easy terms to look for and there's so much out there. If you search that on Google most likely you'll come across a lot of NHS websites, a lot of healthcare websites, not necessarily research papers that you would like to include or that you should include in an assignment that you could talk about. So you want to include papers that have been peer reviewed, papers that have been published by scientists like myself, papers that have been worked on and have been published recently, maybe 20 years ago, maybe 30 years ago, really depends on you. We'll touch upon that a bit later on. But the best um, databases that you should be looking at are PubMed, um, Google Scholar is a good one, so not just any Google, but Google Scholar, um, and also your university. So if you go to your library website, you should be able to search for research papers there as well. But I never actually, I, I don't think I've ever used the UCL website for that. I always, always, 90% of the time, 95% of the time would use um, PubMed. Then you want to decide on the keywords that you are going to input. Now, like I said, for this question, we're looking at obesity and insulin. So it's quite easy. The keyword I would say, obviously, are obesity, and then you've got insulin. You might want to also think about diabetes. You might want to think about resistance, like insulin resistance. You might want to think about diet. So think about the keywords that could give you uh, and lead you to results that could be relevant and write them down before you even start searching for things. Write them down because if you only search for insulin and obesity, you're only going to find papers that talk about uh, potentially talk about insulin and obesity. You might not find anything that discusses anything to do with treatments or anything to do with um, children or adults or whatever it is that you are looking for in particular. So think about all the keywords that could be relevant and that could give you papers that you could use. One way that I do this um, when I'm struggling a little bit is by looking at papers that exist. So you most likely will have recommended reading lists. Open any one of those papers and there should be, when you open them underneath the abstract, there should be a list of keywords. So whatever keywords they have used, you can just take those keywords and use the same keywords because clearly whatever they've used as keywords is what you also are interested in. So that's one way of doing it. The other way is using this method called truncating or stemming. If you put, for example, teach with a little asterisk into the search box, it will come up with every word that has teach in it. So teaching, teacher. For the most part, you don't have to do this as long as you have a well-defined question that you are researching. So now we've gone to PubMed, we've chosen the words insulin, obesity, and let's say children. So you type those into the search bar. Now there is a method called the Boolean, I think it's called Boolean or Boolean <laughs> um, technique, which is where you include the words with different characters in between them. Now you can include and in between. So for example, if you want to make sure the paper discusses insulin, 
women and obesity and children, you want to make sure that you write those three terms down with the word end in between. By putting end in between those words, it finds articles or journals or books for you that have that contain all three words. If you're interested in just finding out about insulin by itself, let's say in the introduction you want to write a bit of a background to do with insulin um, and you want to write a bit of a background to do with obesity, then you can put insulin or, again, or in capitals, or obesity. This is a much wider search and you're going to find loads more papers because there's obviously going to be loads about insulin and then loads about obesity as well. So it's not necessarily going to be about them linked but if you, do want to, if you do want to find out about them individually, you can put insulin or obesity. You can step this up even further to include searches that are even more complex. You might be interested in finding out about insulin to write in your introduction about children or about adults to be able to compare them in your introduction. But actually, your essay is just about children, So, but you do want to include about something about adults. So what you can write is insulin, bracket, children or adults, close bracket. So what that means is it's definitely going to hits it's definitely going to give you hits that are about insulin but then it'll give you those that are about children or those about adults so again it just kind of helps you refine that search a little bit more the last instruction that you can use is the word not so let's say now i want to find out just about insulin in children not about adults i can write insulin and children not adults you can also use the word near so again you can say that you want those two words to be near each other so let's say you're looking at something like um, insulin resistance and children, um, you want to make sure that insulin and resistance are close by because that is like a, a health medical term. So you want to say insulin and near resistance. So that will give you papers that are about insulin resistance. And I find this so, so helpful. I know it sounds really complicated, but it makes sense when you're when you're doing it because you know what you're looking for, you know what you want to look for. Um, and then you can find papers that potentially could be really useful to you. Once you've done this, you can create a search alert. So on PubMed, you can find you can have your search um, for all of them and then create, create an alert. Whenever a new paper is pulled up or published, it will let you know. And that just means that you are up to date with research and you can really impress your examiner or the person that's reading your work by showing them that, look, this is what was published this week and I've got this in my assignment already. And it looks really, really good. You can also refine by the date published and I highly recommend this, especially if you're in the sciences field um, where research is turning around so quickly to say that um, something is misunderstood from a paper that was published three years ago when now it could be well understood um, is very sloppy and it's really important that you are looking at papers that are as recent as possible. You can actually narrow it down to um, the last year, the last six months, the last five years, ten years. Um, I usually go for like five years just because I don't want to narrow my search down too much. You also have the option of refining by publication type as well. A lot of the time I find an article um, and it looks really good, I read the abstract and it's a book and I'm like I don't want to have to, because a lot of the time firstly you can't download the book, secondly referencing books are not as great, it, it depends again in which field, but you want to reference um, peer-reviewed papers um, and that's usually what gives you the, the top marks and so I just don't want to have to do that. It's nice to be able to refine your search for only research papers. If you're someone who's doing clinical trials or looking into that, again you can refine to clinical trials only um, and yeah it's just it's really, really nice and I think um, PubMed also offers the option of refining by journal, which I've never done by the way, but if you want to refine by a particular journal, you can also do that too. Uh, another really nice way of finding um, papers is, let's say you found a paper and I'd recommend you to start from a paper that your supervisor has recommended to you or your mentor or your lecturer has recommended to you. Search for on PubMed and then if you scroll down, you can see two sections. First one says find similar articles and now that section allows you to find articles that are similar and PubMed's kind of pulled them out automatically, similar to the one that you just opened. So what this means is you know for sure, for sure, 100% that you're on the right topic and you're looking at the right field, you continue to scroll down, what you find is that there's a cite, cited by section and this is probably the most underrated section of PubMed. Um, so when you find a paper that you think is awesome, you think it's, it's giving you all the information that you possibly want, when you go to that cited by section, it shows you who else, what other papers have cited that paper. What it means is if it gives you papers that have either used the original paper to build on, so that 
paper that's cited by um, has more kind of the latest research or it'll be some it'll be another paper that is kind of related in topic so either way either way you could potentially use that um, as part of your reading and add that to your assignment in your essay I don't know how I bumped into I just randomly tried it out one day and I found it really really helpful and I always recommend it now to other people. I hope this video was helpful and let me know if it was and let me know what you took away from this and if you have other ideas of how to find good research papers then also do feel free to add that to the comment section down below and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!